One great thing about America and free enterprise is that for the most part, people can only get rich by helping others in some way. That's because capitalism is voluntary. No one's forced to buy from you. And that's great. And most of life, fortunately, happens this way. But now in America, we have more people who do get to use force. They enrich themselves not by pleasing their customers, but by using government to force people to give them money. David Bowes of the Cato Institute calls this the parasite economy. That's a chapter in his brand new book, The Libertarian Mind. So what do you mean by parasite economy? There's two ways to get rich in any society. You can make it and trade with others, or you can take it from people who have produced something. And I call making it the economic means of wealth and taking it the political means. And some of the people who take are criminals. They, they rob you, they embezzle from you. But more importantly are the people who use government to take from you. And that's growing numbers. And what do you mean parasite economy? What's the scam? Well, the scam is that you're not producing something of value yourself. You're using enough the law. enough value to get people voluntarily to give you money. That's right. So you're using the law to get something you couldn't get voluntarily in the marketplace. And you might use a tariff to prevent people from buying from your foreign competitors, or you might get the government to give you a subsidy or a transfer payment. Uh, you might get the government to pass a law that makes it difficult for your uh, competitors to compete with you. And all of those things are parasitical. You're glomming on to the wealth that other people produce. And another reason it's the parasite economy is that when parasites attack us, we have to spend some effort fighting them off. <laughs> and the fighting them off means lobbying. I mean, some of it's just evil, lobbying to get money, but much of it is lobbying just to say, don't crush my business. So well, everyone's probably, forced to play. Probably a smaller part, but yes, you're absolutely right. And over the past 15 years, I have watched Microsoft and then Apple and then Google sit out there on the West Coast making stuff that we all decided voluntarily to buy. And then you have politicians and bureaucrats and lobbyists coming around to these companies and saying, hey, nice little company you got there. Too bad if something happened to it. And they start suggesting that maybe you need to make some campaign contributions and maybe you need to hire some lobbyists and maybe we'll run an antitrust investigation and maybe we'll limit your supply of overseas uh, immigrant em engineers and all of these things then drag these companies into Washington's lobbying culture. And I would argue they're less creative than they once were. Peter Thiel points out that the CEO can no longer focus just on innovation. He's, he's focusing on manipulating Washington. And that's a very important aspect of it. We can talk about how much money it costs, but the most valuable thing we have in our economy is brilliant creative people. And if brilliant creative people are making iPhones and software and automobiles and new ways of getting around the city, then that's a good thing, and if they are distracted into either fighting off other people's lobbyists or hiring their own lobbyists, then that's a net loss for society. It means fewer innovative products and more lobbyists. Uh, let's go to some examples. You include the military-industrial complex among Well, sure. We, we need a national defense, and that certainly requires having some weapons. Even the weapons we need, we have to recognize they're going to be sold to the government by lobbyists, and there's going to be a problem in overbuying. We just spent in the latest omnibus uh, spending bill $470 million on F-35 fighters that the Pentagon doesn't want. You got farmers, veterans, government employees, unions, the ethanol industry, the aerospace industry, trucking. They're all in D.C. trying to get something for nothing. Well, they asked Willie Sutton, why do you rob banks? And he said, because that's where the money is. And for a lot of people, where the money is, is in Washington.